Hi, this is James Pickles, the product manager for Fast Safety and KFX. In this video, I'm going to show how you can set up and run CFD calculations for pull fires. This is a new feature that's introduced in version 8.6 of Fast. The first thing I want to do is to insert a CAD model into Fast. So on the map tab, we have a 3D geometry files folder. Right clicking on the folder allows me to insert a 3D geometry file. So I've navigated to the folder containing my uh, CAD model. There's a range of CAD model formats that you can insert. Here I've got a KFX uh, CAD model format. So I can insert that CAD model and you can see it displayed in the three dimensional viewer. There's some functionality on the ribbon bar to allow you to manipulate this 3D CAD model. So if you need to move the CAD model to a different set of coordinates, if you need to rotate it, or if you need to scale it. And here I don't need to make any modifications to this CAD model, but what I need to do next is to insert a standalone equipment item. I can either insert a standalone equipment item manually and specify the coordinates manually. Alternatively, I can shift and left click in the viewer for, our, for where I want to position the uh, standalone equipment item. So now that I've shift and left clicked in the viewer to move this yellow sphere to a specific point, I can right click on the study and then insert center of rotation in 3D view, uh, a standalone equipment item. If we open that standalone equipment item, you can see on the geometry tab, it's automatically chosen the correct coordinates based on the east and north of the yellow sphere uh, that's uh, in the 3D viewer. Now, you may notice that uh, this only gives east and north coordinates. There's no coordinates for the elevation or the Z coordinate of the yellow sphere. That's because standalone equipment items uh, don't have a specification of the elevation. The elevation of the pull fire is specified within the pull fire scenario itself. So the elevation uh, of the pull fire has to be specified manually. We can't pick that up from the 3D viewer. So within the standalone equipment item, I need to choose the material. There is a limitation in 8.6 at the moment on the materials that you can run in CFD. Those materials have a have this KFX symbol uh, next to their name. Uh, this is something that we will improve on in the future. But for now, you can only model in CFD the materials that have the KFX symbol next to their name. So I'm going to model heptane in this scenario. And then now I need to insert a pull fire underneath the standalone equipment item. Within this pull fire, I've got the option of modeling either circular or rectangular uh, shapes. If you select uh, circular, then you can choose to model that in CFD or in the standard FAST. Uh, way. Um, if you choose rectangle, you can only model rectangles in CFD. Uh, you can't model rectangles in the standard fast way. So here I've got a rectangle and now I need to specify the length and the width of the rectangular pole. I can also specify the rotation. And the elevation of the release uh, we can firstly have a look at the 3D model and we can see down at the bottom left here of the 3D viewer, uh, the, we can see the coordinates of the yellow sphere. So the coordinates for this center of rotation here, uh, this is the coordinates of the yellow sphere. So we have the east, the north, and then we also have the elevation or the Z coordinates, which is 2.5 meters. Now, I recommend positioning the pull fire slightly above the 
the elevation of, of the ground level. If you position the pole fire uh, exactly at the elevation of the ground, then you might, you might find that the pole fire itself uh, interacts with the ground, or rather the ground blocks the pole fire from developing. So my recommendation is to position the elevation of the pole just slightly above the elevation of the ground. So the elevation of the ground is 2.55. I'm going to specify 2.8 just to be sure. On the pole fire parameters tab of the standalone pole fire, we can choose the radiation levels of interest we can also choose the temperature levels of interest. So temperature results for fires is something new that's introduced in FAST 8.6. In previous versions of FAST, you can't get temperature results um, for, for standalone pole fires or, or for any other fire type. But in 8.6, when running the CFD calculations, you can produce temperature results. We also have some control over the number of time steps uh, to model. So now that that pole fire has been set up, then we can actually start the calculations. So on the home tab, we have a new button called Run CFD. This becomes active when a standalone pole fire item is enabled. You can only run a single pole fire model at a time. You can't batch run multiple pole fires at the moment. This is something we'll improve in future versions. So you select the pole fire and then click run CFD. We can model multiple weathers in parallel if we wanted to. So here I could just choose to run two. I could run all three if I wanted. We can only run a single weather direction at a time. You can't run multiple weather uh, wind directions at a time. So here I could just select, uh, I'll go with the default west uh, wind direction. And then I can choose whether to use the CAD model in the calculations or not. And then when we click finish, the software will open up a new instance of the 3D viewer. We can see in the 3D viewer this rectangle, re uh, rectangular shape. So this re represents the location of the pole. And then what we will show we see in the output log is some messages being populated. And we will also see some results forming in the three dimensional viewer. So now you can see some results forming just above this rectangular pole, uh, rectangular pole. So what we're looking at here is uh, two ISO surfaces. So I chose to run two weathers in parallel, 1.5F and 5D. So we have two sets of ISO surfaces. We can turn these on and off. So if we only wanted to view 1.5F, we can do that. If we only wanted to view 5D, we can do that. So the ISO surface is a three-dimensional contour for a specific value for temperature. This is the default temperature for the ISO surface, but we can change this temperature of interest. And then we, we can see the three-dimensional ISO surface obviously adjust in size. So I'll let those calculations run and then we can take a look at uh, the results uh, once they've finished. So here we have a model with calculations complete and then I'd like to show some of the features of the of the 3D viewer itself. So I've already talked about the control of the ISO surfaces. We also have ISO contours so if I turn off the ISO surfaces and then turn on ISO contours. So we have a set of ISO contours for X, Y and Z planes for each uh, scenario that's been modelled, in this case for each weather 
for the standalone pool fire. So we can have a look at X plane ISO contours. And what this gives us is a set of two dimensional contours here for, for temperature, but you can also get the same for radiation. And we can adjust the offset from the origin of this two dimensional plane. So if we move this slider, we can see the two dimensional ISO contours for any plane within this three dimensional space. So that's an X plane. Then we have a Y plane. We can see the temperature values for each of these contours at the top right in the legend. And then here is a Z plane as well. What we can also get from this 3D viewer is the temperature or radiation at any point within this three dimensional space. So if I shift and left click anywhere on the 3D model, um, then in the legend on the right hand side, we can see at the bottom, we have the temperature at this point. So here the temperature is 1087 degrees Celsius. You can click anywhere on the contours uh, and we will see the temperature or radiation value updated. But you can also click anywhere within the 3D space. So here, I'm just clicking on the vessel and we can see the temperature of the air or the mixture at this particular point, 105 degrees Celsius. I should say at this point, this is not the temperature of the vessel's surface, it's the temperature of the air or the mixture at this particular point due to uh, due to the flame. That's temperature results. You can also view radiation results by right clicking on the pool fire, going to the 3D option and then clicking radiation. Or you also have this 3D drop down up here where you can select radiation or temperature results. So if we have a look at radiation, Again, we have a set of ISO surfaces for each weather. You can turn those on or off. And then we also have the ISO contours. So in the model, I requested 4, 12 and a half, and 37 and a half kilowatts per square meter. You can change those values if you wish. And then again, you can move the offset from the origin to view any two dimensional plane within this three-dimensional space. As well as results in the three-dimensional viewer, we have some two-dimensional graphs. So here we have radiation and temperature versus distance and radiation and temperature contours on a two-dimensional plane. Uh, the radiation and temperature versus distance transects and the radiation temperature 2D contour planes are defined on the pool fire itself. So here we can say we can specify the transect. Uh, we can specify the transect here. We could also specify uh, the reports to give us radiation and temperature at a specific point. And then here we can specify the two dimensional uh, radiation and temperature contour plane. So that's the two dimensional graphs. And then we also have some results in the reports. So we have a new pool fire CFD report where this report gives us the radiation at a point, the temperature at a point, radiation versus distance along the transect and temperature versus distance along the same transect. And that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. So thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy these new features.